Hello, welcome to Super Game Super Show. Chris here again with another World War II RTS. Becoming a bit regular now, but this one's a totally different one, sort of. This is Counteraction, uh, released in 1997 by Nashigri Lik. Okay, <laughs> if you're Russian or uh, Eastern European and you're yelling at me right now, I'm sorry, I didn't pronounce your game correctly. Uh, but this was also published by Mindscape, which we uh, all heard of Mindscape. But uh, as for the uh, developers, I've never actually heard of them, and uh, not too familiar with any other games they made. They made two others of unpronounceable names, which I won't even attempt, uh, and uh, released in 98, I believe, and 2000, respectively. I, I won't even bother you with trying to pronounce them, but yeah, this is a World War II RTS game with just a little bit of a twist of the games at the time. There's no base building. Uh, all your troops are a little bit funky. They've all got some special little powers, which you'll see in a bit. And uh, yeah, it's based on objectives, and it's not just the mindless go out, seek out the enemy, and destroy the enemy. Those kind of missions where, you know, the last objective is destroy all enemies on the map. It's not realistic, and I find it just a pain to just traipse and troops around just to find that one guy hidden in a ditch uh, and making uh, dinner. All right, so the first thing you know is uh, this looks like an ancient game, doesn't it? This looks like a top-down RTS game. Could have been released, what, 93, 94? A bit later. But 1997 this was released, and as you'll know, in 1997 we had a lot of different games coming out. I mean, one year later we had StarCraft, but for 1997, the best game that I can think of in RTF is Myth uh, The Fallen Lords, which was full 3D, rotating cameras, full 3D sprites, you know, not just sprites, sorry, as in vector models that you could zoom in and spin round, and you see blood chunks and deformable terrains and things. I mean, it was also the year that. Uh, Age of Empires was released, which is a bit of a step back, it's more towards this sort of end of the genre, but there was a lot better stuff out there, so it's no wonder this got really overlooked, and honestly, I haven't been able to find many things about it in English at all. I'm surprised I actually managed to find an English version. Uh, got this from uh, mobygames.com, I believe. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's a bit cheeky, charging you to pay for a game that no one's ever heard of, and not many people have ever played. However, there is, if you speak German or Russian, you can go on YouTube and watch loads and loads of mission by mission plays of this game. Uh, in fact, I'm not sure if the gentleman actually talks or not, but uh, yeah, different language. So I thought I'd give it a quick, quick run through. So as you hear, see here, this is the first mission as the Russians. Uh, basically, what my mission was, at the start you'll notice you saw three black cars. There they are, right on cue and um, all I had to do was get them away from this uh, German attack. This is the opening days of the German retaliation on the Eastern Front of uh, uh, the Soviet Russia. at the time where Hitler turned around and said, nah, fuck you, and he came at them and caught them all by surprise with their trousers down did this massive motorized push all the way across uh, uh, Russia. And the generals had been caught a little bit close to this, uh, this push that they'd gone. So all you have to do, Retreat the general straight across the river, bish bash bosh. Yeah, that's it. That's a mission. That is a real mission. You know, someone could come up to you and say, I've got to get the generals out of there and then destroy all enemies on the map. <laughs> no, so get the generals out. As you'll see, you get a nice, satisfying. Da -da -da. Any second now. Complete. That's what you get. That's your reward. Pat on the back. Good general, good general. Uh, here we go, next mission. Next mission's a bit more, sorry for a bit of chopping editing, editing at the beginning of the video, obviously it wasn't very professional. Um, I actually had several attempts at pressing Control F5 on the old DOS box and ended up recording snippets of lots of different things. I originally played the German campaign, but uh, actually got pretty screwed over there and killed. Right, this mission, didn't have time to read it. I've got to get all these uh, supply trucks again off the map, out of the way. All these tanks are absolutely useless. I don't know this at this point. If I read the mission brief, I probably would have. But these tanks are all useless. None of them are complete or have got shells. This is a tank factory in the woods. It needs evacuating quick before the Germans overrun it. 
So it's a scramble look and I forget to do the basic thing which is load all my infantry into these uh, supply trucks which they can all jump in the back and become motorised infantry and zoom across the map without being hindered so I actually end up losing a lot of stuff due to the fact that I hadn't used that in hindsight and uh, I try and rely on these little motorised machine gun cars to try and take out this infantry. I've got a little blockade here I'm going to try and use to slow the enemy down they use a pincer movement and you'll notice there's actually two tracks that go around the uh, outside of the, the base so I could go left there over the river immediately and then back down a bit of a snaky curvy track uh, really in my eyes a long route or you can go right and uh, yeah just sneak around down there straight down there but as you'll see later I think left is a bit of a challenging <laughs> hard slogged gruel. I mean right doesn't seem to be a piece of cake considering we've got trucks with no guns and infantry trailing up the rear but uh, here we go here comes the Germans, the Germans are hit on the left side meeting medium resistance, these machine gun cars are great at taking out uh, troops whereas a tank in uh, any form of combat is obviously not so great, it's only got a small articulated fire of a machine gun on the front uh, its main cannon is suited more to taking out buildings or uh, obviously and the tanks are um, missing shells. So this game tried to focus on a bit of realism. It's trying to sucker a bit of realism in there. I mean, I think it's the first game of the company. Uh, obviously, obviously not a big success, was it? Uh, and the company didn't go on to make many games at all, except for the uh, two unmentionables. Not because they're rude, because I can't say them. <laughs> so, um, well, we've got some explosions going off here. Sounds are not too bad. Uh, it uses the um, AWE sound card or uh, Sound Blaster Pro uh, compatible sound cards, or you know, your DOSBox will replicate that quite nicely. Um, only uh, audio it uses no MIDI, so it had caught up that, but it has all DOSBox features. It's only runnable via DOSBox, or I suppose Windows 95 or 98, because you run DOSBox pretty easily in those things or DOS itself, we start in DOS mode, but you can't run it in EXE mode, as far as I know, and you can't set it up in uh, EXE mode, it's all DOS box, which by 1997, Windows 98 was out by then, so, you know, hard to believe that Windows 98 was out, I'm pretty sure it was out by then, I'll have to check that, but I'm pretty sure it actually came out a little while before, and uh, only about a year later they released 2000. So most programs were auto-launch, came on CDs, I'm pretty sure this probably came on a CD, judging by the music, it's probably a bit much to have, you know, 12 floppy drives going for all this music, but um, yeah, they would have had an EXE launcher and a proper installation set up, and it wasn't uncommon to see DOSBox set up and things like that, you know, but um, we were all pretty used to them back then, obviously they didn't play this game back then, it's a bit early, but uh, Yes, uh, a bit behind its time, so I mean, it is showing its time, but... We've all heard, heard the rumours about uh, Tetris being actually a propaganda game, maybe this is, maybe the German campaign so hard because uh, they didn't want to show weakness, someone will probably kicked in and still, well I don't know, <laughs> can't start saying things like that, <laughs> make sure this game is uh, pro-Russian all the way through, don't feature those uh, damn liberalist Americans. So there's only uh, two campaigns, the German campaign which is a flipping hard slog from the outset, which you're supposed to be absolutely wiping the floor with the uh, Russians in the first half and then this uh, obviously the second half the Russians get their upper hand if you've uh, learned your history and um, yeah just the uh, Russian campaign which is uh, a bit of a run and gun style at the start dragging everyone back and desperately trying to hold bridges to no avail and actually really good fun missions quite hard as you see everyone's located on a square sort of basis so getting troops to the front to fight and clamber over burnt out tanks and things like that trying to get them on bridges it actually ends up a bit of a mission actually just trying to arrange everyone just trying to 
absolutely get them into a firing position. Everyone's got their own separate uh, uh, abilities. Infantry have grenades or rocket launchers respectively or sometimes explosives as we'll show right now. As you see this German troop here, if I click this and eventually click that, no, maybe click it, yep. He'll walk over and blow it up. So you got abilities like that. We'll just go back to the game now. And uh, you can use uh, explosives to blow up targets. Uh, obviously, if you're quick on the trigger, you can get your infantry throwing grenades on tanks or, or taking out tanks. Um, also, in a minute, I'll show you what I really should have done um, right at the start of the game, which is uh, loading infantry in and out of vehicles, which is uh, obviously a bit of a new thing. You didn't see that much for a little while. But um, basically, my overall review of this game is sounds okay, not too bad gameplay. Yeah, it's there, it's simple, it's easy, it's uh, actually got some realistic missions. You don't have to do base building, some people like base building, some people like micromanaging you know, the resources and things like that. But that was one thing I really hated from back in the day, Age of Empires. You, know, you scoured the entire map for metal ore or stone ores and things like that and it's just not there and you just end up cheating just to complete a skirmish things like that because you just ran the resources dry and things like that and um, yeah no base building sounds okay gameplay's there a bit behind its time it's a decent game though you, know, you might want to check it out you might not but uh, there you go that was um, counteraction for the PC I've been Chris and good night